You're led into thinking this is possible. The precipice is so close, each leap effortless. And then, well, you can't. There's a barrier. It's physically impossible to reach the top. It's obvious it's impossible, but I couldn't believe it. And I think there's a part of 23 year old me that still believes there is a way. So, a few things have happened in the Sonic community since I wrote and uploaded my existential relationship with Sonic video. If you haven't watched it, I recommend you do before continuing with this one. Anyway, Sage 2020 kicked off incredibly, with Sonic GT blowing the socks off of all spectators. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 received a release date, and the lawmaster Cybershell himself made an amazing comeback after two years of inactivity with a video on DX's floors and the Chow Garden, literally days after my video dropped, might I add. Do I suspect plagiarism? No, but those are not the things I want to talk about today. See, I've recently discovered how alive and thriving the Sonic Adventure modding community is. To this day, there are tons of modders fixing and customising the game to be the port it always should have been. From sound, to aesthetic, to skins, to mechanics, there are dedicated Sonic fans maintaining the game's status and even improving it. Though of course this isn't something new to the Sonic fandom, the mascot likely wouldn't survive this long without the nearly fanatic and perplexing levels of adoration we fawn upon him and his games. Well, when he's behaving himself, that is. Anyway, I was perusing such creations when I came across this channel. Jeremiah's designs custom Sonic Adventure 2 battle chow maps alongside short Animal Crossing house tours and glitch news stories. I watched a few of his videos, leaving a pleasant comment on his route and upload, and he happened to reply amiably. I was going to subscribe and leave it at that, but then I had an idea. Could this YouTuber perhaps help me in breaking that barrier? Asking that question, for me, was somewhat difficult. I didn't want to intrude on this stranger in his content with my strange content, but eventually I decided to bite the bullet. Here's how that exchange went. His response filled me with optimism, and so I checked out the link he sent me, hoping for some sort of toolkit or custom editor that might permit elevation of the vertical invisible barrier that had plagued me since my childhood. To my shock and surprise, an enhanced Chow Garden, a mod by Shadapic, had been updated in the last month. I took one look at the changelog, and my jaw immediately dropped to the floor. For right at the top, it said, as if made for me, exclamation mark and all. I was speechless. I felt like this was a big personal moment in my geeky life. Imagine if your favourite game was released again, two decades after its initial release, with the only difference being one minor patch fixing something tiny that had annoyed you unreasonably. Well, I downloaded the mod, booted it into the mod loader, and launched the game. It's difficult to explain how I felt leaving the lobby for the garden, unsure whether the mod had worked, but confident it had. I came to the realisation that this was it. This small hurdle that had always held me back was perhaps... gone. The first thing I noticed in the garden blew me away. There were two chow eggs waiting for me on this fresh save. One was securely planted on a reachable step, but the second was further, out of reach, on the step that had always been wardened off and evaded me. This was confirmation. It had worked. The mod had worked. I felt an alien shock seeing that egg there out of place. It was wrong, but it felt so correct at the same time, the way it always should have been. I approached the rock structure with trepidation, wanting to savour what was about to happen with full cognizance. First, I ritualistically tried out the accompanying rocks always within leaping distance. Then, I reached the threshold. There was no turning back now. I felt excited, but also strangely sad. As if by making that jump I would be losing part of myself, a sensation that beguiled me for most of my life. But nonetheless, I jumped. Again, it's hard to explain how it felt. Perhaps I lack the vocabulary to articulate specifically why such a seemingly insignificant moment had such an effect on me. I could see further across the static sea than I ever had before. I could even climb the mountains, running along the cusp of the map, overhanging the entrance. I was completely liberated from the restraints of that map. The thesis of my original video, where I to firmly supplement one, would resemble something like this. Unsurmountable limitations can still foster experience and appreciation. 
That is, even if you don't reach your goal, striving to is better than not striving to, as it will foster knowledge and behaviour in other associated areas. Not being able to escape the restrictions we find ourselves victim to can be a good thing sometimes. My inability to progress resulted in 100% save data with all unlockables and a reasonable mastery of the game's mechanics and design, and I enjoyed every second of it, even if my goal had been left unreached. Another reading of my initial video could be that for anomic or mentally atypical sufferers out there like myself, burdened by the difficulty of climbing life's mountain, those invisible threads woven by society and relationships, no matter how imperceptible or dense they may be, can sometimes be the only thing stopping such a person from figuratively exiting the game. Though I'd always perceived this invisible barrier as an enemy, it was also the only thing stopping me from glitching out entirely, and in the process, further losing my sense of stealth. Either way, the existence of this mod has caused me to reflect on that video both on a technical and metaphorical level. My head's a bit of a mess, if I'm being honest, but I'm deciding not to dwell on it too much. It really isn't some life-shattering moment, and truth be told, one thought that regrettably kept jumping into my head was, even though I was enjoying myself, is this it? Perhaps I'll never be satisfied. Even at the precipice, I found myself looking at the clouds and far oceanic horizon and wondering what other limitations might be broken. Ultimately, I've determined the lessons to learn from all of this to be as follows. I'm not alone. I've had numerous people share similar frustrated sentiments at being unable to navigate the architecture of the Chow Garden, and obviously enough to some people that they would create a whole modification to circumvent that frustration. This very ultra-specific frustration that I felt alone in for most of my life. But I wasn't, and I'm not alone in that. And if I'm not alone in that, that tiny dilemma unnoticed by most, then I'm likely not alone ever. Somewhere out there, someone will feel the same. No matter how pedantic an issue I might have, it will likely never match the unbridled precise nature of this one. But mostly, this small adventure I've shared with you has taught me how to do that, share, and why I should. If I didn't share with you, if I didn't channel my frustration to art, if I didn't seek those creations and modifications shared by others, I would still be climbing in my mind. Sometimes you physically cannot do something alone, and must rely on a friend, lover, sibling, familiar, heck, even a complete stranger you don't know who doesn't know you, in order to accomplish a goal. If I hadn't reached out to Jeremias and then been directed to that mod by Shadatuk, I may never have reached the top of that mountain in my lifetime. Sonic Adventure 2 is a game about connecting with others to overcome the impossible, and it took me 20 years to realise it. Thank you very much for watching this video, and if you also saw the video before this one, then thank you very much for watching that as well. Um, I'd appreciate a like or a subscription or anything like that, but I would very much like to thank Shadatic and Jeremiah for their input. Uh, both of them upload YouTube videos uh, related to video game content, and Shadatic in particular streams content on Twitch, so if you want to go and check out either of their channels or social media, I will link them in the description. I'm starting university this week and I've also got loads of other things coming up. Um, the past couple of years for me have been incredibly difficult and doing this duology of, of videos related to the Sonic Chow Garden has inadvertently helped me quite a bit uh, in realising what I want to do with myself and how I should perceive my struggles. So I'm very grateful for anyone who has given me the opportunity to, you know, uh, lend me their ear essentially and just talk my mind. Uh, I've got a second channel, I'm uploading random things up to it, um, like vlogs or old content or, you know, just things that don't fit into this channel as well. And yeah, that was basically all I wanted to say. I'm, I'm really thankful for anyone who's helped me out with these videos and uh, I'm not sure if this is the first recorded footage of all time of someone being on top of the Chow Garden, but, you know, if it is, if it is the first recorded footage on YouTube, then, you know, I'm, 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 very, <laughs> I'm very happy with that accomplishment. Uh, I know it's definitely a rarity to see this on YouTube, so uh, I just wanted to share it with you all. And yeah, thank you very much. I hope you all have a really good day.